All right, what's up, everybody? Tools in action. Today, special tool talk. We're at. <laughs> Shut up, Eric. We're at Charlotte International Airport. We just got back from the DeWalt event. We have some special guests here today. We have Eric Job. Hey, what's up? We have Stuart, the Hi. tool guy. And we have Workshop Addict. What's happening? You know, you guys have never heard of Workshop Addict. It's just a small little blog. They're starting out, so. It's a great site. Go to it. <laughs> yeah. Um, so basically, you guys, we want to do this quick tool talk because we wanted to um, wrap up today's event and let you know what we thought of it. So we'll start, go around the table, we'll ask everybody what their favorite tool was, and we'll go from there. So right. what's your favorite? I didn't have a favorite tool. I think my favorite thing is we got to actually build our own, I don't want to say build our own drill, but kind of assemble our own drill together, which I thought was cool, which was just basically actually putting some screws in and uh, some stickers on, but that was my favorite part. I thought that was pretty cool to see the assembly line and actually do it. Wow, that's exciting. I what was, about you, Stuart? Yeah, seeing all the, the product action, it's not machines, a lot of it's done by people. Wow. I, I would have thought it's all robotic, like robotic sanding, robotic assembly, no. People, a lot of people. Uh, yeah, and they take care of what they do, it's fun to watch them. What about you, John? Um, as far as tool-wise, actually I thought the coolest thing was the, um, the, the radio that's in the box system that they're coming out with. Radio. You didn't see the radio? Oh, the it's radio. Tough, it's yeah, tough, tough box. Yeah, the tough box radio. That was really kind of neat. Um, especially if you've got the tough box system, that's going to be cool. But like the other two have said, is is the people that were working there, it was really neat. And um, beyond that, the factory was extremely clean and they are following a lot of lean principles. You could see them, how they were taking parts, bringing them and staging them so they could put it together and everything was really quick. There was like drill after drill after drill after drill. It was kind of efficient, it was neat. And there was a lot of testing too. Yeah, a lot of testing. A lot of testing, how much guys. Everything, everything got tested. Away. There wasn't like one tool tested that did like not twice get or three yeah. times. I was always wondering how they did that. I figured you would send a batch out and hope you make know, your spot check. And no, yeah. they test every was, single drill. That's what surprised me. Yeah. And the cool part was we found out once you took the battery off the bottom when it came out of the out of the testing, there's a dot on the bottom. That, that tells you if it's been tested yeah, and passed. Yeah, tested for this, it passed that, it passed that. So there's like a little system going on. It's really neat. Yeah, yeah, it's and the cool, cool thing I thought was was that uh, the firmware. I didn't know the drills had it's, firmware. It's programmed oh, yeah. during yeah. assembly. Yeah. yeah, during assembly, they put them in this machine that programs, uploads firmware. So you know what that means. We can hack them. Yeah, which is great. I don't know what you would do hacking them, but them it's pretty cool stuff. All right, next, Bluetooth batteries. What did you guys think of Bluetooth batteries? I didn't, me personally, I don't see the, I don't see what they're for. I mean, that's just me, but I'm not going to, I don't know. It just, you can only pair it with one device, one phone, and I guess if you had a problem with it, it might be a good way to track it, but. Yeah, basically. I'm just not too, I just don't see what it's really. Man, oh, for. thanks. Thanks. Basically, you guys, the Bluetooth batteries is a battery. It's got Bluetooth in it, and what it does is, uh, like Eric said, it'll let you know when the battery's low. It'll let you know if the battery's out of range. It tells you, can, you the temperature too. Temperature. You know. I think cycles. You can also yeah, the turn the bat, disable the lock battery, you can so you can out. lock it out. So let's say you're on a job site, you lock it out. You know, Stuart can't come and grab it. Now that's a good thing, but that's also a bad thing, I think, yeah. because let's say you lock it out on a job, you leave the job, you go to a job that doesn't have internet connectivity. You can't get back in that battery because it needs that app to go to the cloud to contact the wall and say, hey, I'm unlocking this. It's not really phone dependent, it's cloud dependent. Did they have on the one battery. too about distance? If they got, you could turn it on or off, but if you got too far away from the phone, it would disable. Oh, yeah. would it actually disable it or would it just, oh. not, or it would just wouldn't <laughs> it talk was, to no, each other? No, it would shut it down. There was one if it got out of range, I believe, that uh, that's oh, actually cool. stole it and took away. Right. It got more than like 100 feet away from you. Yeah, yeah, but that's the thing. If you got your phone charging, now you're just sitting here charging. You're like, okay, I'm gonna go over here and do this. You're not right. thinking. I'd be more. It'd be more of a hassle. Of it's car. gonna be a hassle. Yeah. It's, it, it, we're gonna have to see how it works. Yeah. It's, it's definitely an extra step, you guys. Um, it's in, infancy in the technology, but you know, since they can put firmware in drills, they're gonna put firmware in these batteries, and a lot of cool stuff's gonna come out of this. You a lot of stuff in the batteries. It already, it already records. Like cycles, things like that. Yeah. So when you send something back, you crack it open and then you right. But now you can do it manually. Well, now the user can see. It's it. more of a gadget. I mean, I don't know if I would pay the upsell for it. Twenty bucks extra. Really? Yeah. You know what? If you could do more than one battery at a time, I think it would be cool. But you can. Would... You just need to connect to each battery individually via Bluetooth. Yeah, you do a bank of I think the neat thing is them. this might not be the end all. <laughs> You know, this might just be the beginning. Of that's true. Yeah, that's you know it. What? It's Very good the point. first step. It might do something better in the future. Yeah, and for some point. people, it's going to be a really cool thing to have. I mean, some people, you know, you're on a job site in the city, you don't hear batteries walking, you know, or, you know, you're at lunch, your guy's using your drill, you know when he goes far away. I don't know. 
about the only thing I can think it'd be good for is <laughs> no. The thing I think it might be decent for is if, when you start to overload a tool and it overloads on heat. It's right. You you or to diagnose the tool. Do I have a bad battery or right. do I have? Yeah. yeah. So that might be nice to find out whether or not you're running the tool yeah. too hard. Yeah, I think that's a good point too. All right. What else? Toolbox. I, what? Oh, I thought well, the coolest no. thing someone touched on, but I just like the fact that all the manuf not all, but some of the manufacturers come back here to the states. Oh and yeah, I think that is super cool. And you know what? It's done. The reason that's doing it is because the users want that. You guys have all called for, called for that. So yeah. So Dewalt's really cool. bringing manufacturing back here. Not all of it's here, obviously, but they do. You know, there was a lot here more than I thought. Yeah. 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 I thought it was gonna be like four or five tools. That's right. There was a lot. And they're expanding it too. The whole area where we were today, yeah. it's been cleaned out two months. They're having another another motor train another line. tool back. Nice. I, and I was surprised at just the the quality control it goes through. Yeah. You know, I mean, they were wiping them down, making sure it was. I mean, when they go into a bin, those things are tested, ready to go. Yeah. It, it makes but sense. you could also tell the factory was really clean. They cleaned. Yeah. It very you know, there was a great big board of like, clean this, clean this, clean this. So you know, the work area is clean. The tools are clean, you know they're doing a good job. Yeah. What do you guys think of the new DeWalt toolbox? The black one. Better than the yellow one. Really? But not better than the Milwaukee. I don't think so. Yeah, I don't think so either. And it's like, the guy told me, it was like, we saw a new toolbox there, you guys, it's black. Uh, it's got some cool features, it's not a bad toolbox. But I think he was saying it's like a $1,200 toolbox. Yeah, it's gonna have a uh, heavier duty casters, yeah, uh, heavier duty It's, it's meant for slides, industrial slides. use. Right. Milwaukee's more aimed at the general purpose user. This looks like it's aimed for. But I feel like the Milwaukee feels better, feels better quality than the, the wall. Well, I, I, I have seen it. Those drawers and this one did not. Yes, it, so. it, it, it had. It, had, it well, did, it but they weren't, like not like, like the Milwaukee. Yeah. But, yeah. but once you load it up, it, it, it should be smoother. That's true, we didn't check it loaded out, so who knows? When it's empty, you have all that. That spring force, no momentum, just poof. Okay. Put a little stuff in there, it dampens it. Yeah, they definitely fixed the handle on the top too, you guys, where you can yeah, open it that's now. Good. Yeah. It also is indented. I got in, the, the one I was talking to didn't understand why. Uh, maybe strength, maybe it's just design. But it was easy grab and heavy to do the pistons. Yeah. It, it looks, it could be suitable to dust space. It, it looks almost like they're going after. Not the list of market, but the sub list of market. Because list of the boxes are expensive. Even their technician Who, boxes? What boxes? List them. Why are you laughing? Because I know what's going to happen. You forgot to turn your phone off the ringer. Someone's going to call you five minutes before we're about to be done. And oh, that's right. That. So that's why I'm laughing. So you know what, you guys? We're going to pause it right now. Okay, we're back. Stuart's talking. Did you turn it off? The yeah. Yeah. Okay. But when you have a camera battery or a laptop, it'll tell you how many cycles, how old it is, the lifetime you have left, capacity. It'll tell you. Like, Actually, that's a good idea that you think about. It. Let's say you're running a camera off that Bluetooth battery, you know, with your DeWalt USB thing. You could check in to say how much time, you know, you put it on a GoPro, put it up high, you could just Bluetooth into that battery and say, wow, I got 50% charge left. I don't think they're thinking of that, though. People no, they're not, GoPros, but I'm just I'm after. coming up with ideas. That's not a bad idea. I know, Stuart. That's why, that's why, came that's up why with we're it. tools in action and you're the tool guy. Hmm. How with the backwards the hammer. Yeah. How are you going <laughs> to... No, here's the question. How are you going to mount that GoPro with the battery hanging off of it? We got ways Velcro, to do it. man. Velcro. Yeah. We're we tools like, we can think of everything. Duct tape. <laughs> All right, what else did we see? What about the carbon fiber level? It's a what? You didn't carbon see the carbon fiber, fiber level? level? No. It's wow. 48 inch. It was it's pretty nice. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. That was a really nice That's level. when you, did you see it? Yeah. Playing with okay. your teddy bear. I mean, it's cool. It's a level. I mean, it's, you know. It was light. How much was, was that, though? 100 bucks. 700. 100 oh, 100 bucks. bucks. Yeah. What'd you think of the DeWalt hand tool lineup? The way they package them in the little thing. I mean, it's neat. You like, I like things compartmentalized, but what happens when you need to add to it? Like, I use 1132. Uh, like, it fits like number eight machine screw uh, nuts. You can't put that into there. So you have a tool that's hanging out, so it's contained, but it's always something else out. What if you need right. another adapter? I know. And you being the avid mechanic that you are every day working on cars, you need that. No. <laughs> no, but I think, mechan I think mechanics, I think it's a good well, point. I think yeah, but yeah. I, I, I don't do that kind of... What I like about those tools what? is you could take the insert out and actually put right into the toolbox. Yeah. yeah. So it actually, can, you could take it out and almost that case becomes a carrying case, leaving your toolbox yeah. or stack and go. Right. And I was talking to them and those ones that stack together and click together, they don't have any handles. So you got to carry them like this. But the next generation one already has a handle built into it. No, so, and it will be backwards compatible. 
Yeah, that's the one that was yeah. under embargo that we're not supposed to talk yeah. about. You guys heard it first on Workshop yeah. Attic. <laughs> <laughs> Check out their channel, you guys. It's pretty good. What else was cool? What about, I like that uh, threaded rod cutter. That, did you see oh, that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was pretty cool. And then they, still, that was a prototype also. Well, yeah, yeah but it's coming out. They didn't embargo. Q1, no. And then they also had a little blower like the Milwaukee. Yeah. Yeah, that was pretty cool. Yeah, it looked cool. identical. It yeah. looked pretty they close. Looked really that metal bandsaw, though, they had like a four inch cut capacity on, on pipe. That was huge. Yeah. On the cordless one. Yeah. That was nice. It's gonna be and neat. a lot of the stuff's coming out with 5 0 batteries. So. Yeah, that, that's what they're saying. I was asking about the brushless. Like, if they're going to expand, because everyone wants, where's the brushless saw? Where's uh, the circuit saw, reciprocating saw? Because the other brands have this. So they said, well, we're shipping tools with a 5 amp hour battery. Others really ship with a 4, and we see comparable runtime. Uh, they're going after the drills and drivers. They say they think that, or they, they see that's where they get the most advantages. Right. I don't know. You're still getting the brushes, people. They're, they're going to be shipping with five they, pretty soon. They're five saying, they're saying with the they saying with the saw. They were very careful with the words. With the saws, they don't see at that much efficiency with the runtime to make uh -huh. to make it worth it. But they weren't talking about power. They were focusing, telling me about yeah. the runtime. Yeah. So I, I think that's an interesting point. Maybe in yeah. the future, if they want to go to a beefier saw, maybe then they'll go to brushless. Yeah. The one tool that I really liked there was, and it's not the glamorous one, but it was that sander. Oh, the, yeah. The, the, yeah. The, the oscillating spin, uh, palm sander there. It's very, very short, very compact, but it, it really hooked up extremely well to their HEPA back system. Man, it yeah. was yeah, clicking click. in, and it was great. You know what? I got the generation right before, and I love the thing. It's awesome. So. Yeah, I had a pad sander collection. Oh, was it? You get done. Bunch of sanding and there's nothing in it, it's just blowing through. Oh, These okay. new bags, but hooking up to the hose is going to be fantastic. Okay. Okay. Nice. What else? The miter stuff was cool. Yeah, the oh, miter yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah but that's, that's, we're, we're, that's coming. We're talking, they know about that. Well, we're still talking about the show. Well, still, I thought it was pretty like cool this. to see in action. I've never seen an action up yeah. close. It was cool to see. It. I love the handle like, on it. It was what, what, 35 pounds or something? Yeah, you can carry whatever way. Like, from the top to the side. Yeah. It was like, yeah. hey, like a briefcase. That's all right. Yeah. The 20 volt miter saw, you guys, was top quality, top notch. Seven three quarters? Was that what it was? Yeah, yeah. yeah. seven quarters. Seven, seven, seven quarters. Quarter. Well, it doesn't take standard circular saw blades. It does, but he said you'll get a lot of tear out from their aggressive tooth profile. Oh, really? So they're shipping it with a new. Or they made blade. a new blade for it. I'm assuming it's being shipped with it. Yeah. yeah. And if you want a replacement, you're gonna have to buy it ahead of time. Wow. Yeah, something was a 15 degree or something like that. Yeah, I it think so. It's I think a 25 dollar blade. Yeah, I'm not sure. And you can usually get seven and a quarter inch blades pretty. Well, cheap, you, you like can use whatever bucks. you want with right. it. But if you want the good for, like the good results for right. trim, that might be something that must work. A little bit of an issue for somebody who wants a real clean cut. I, I know they're making a saw blade for that, but usually, like if you got a 10 inch saw, you're going to a higher tooth blade to get a nice fine cut, you know, instead of a construction site saw. But, you know, I don't know if you're going to have that availability in the future. They, they already have, in, in that size, they already have a finished blade and a framing blade. But okay. if their finished blade wasn't good enough, was it clean enough that they had to make another one? I, I think other kind of precision blades or fine tooth blades might see the same result. Well, and one thing they did mention about the saw too is that if the battery starts going low, I think was it 3200 RPMs? Yeah, if the battery starts going low, it, it flashes. Going low, it will start flashing. That the way, XPS you know, light. Yeah, oh. and the faster RPM tends to keep the board down and not lift at all. But man, he was cutting so through some hardware with that thing, like yeah. there's like yeah, there's we butter. Yeah, cut some oak with it. There's yeah. no problem. I really like that that light where it puts the shadow on your line. That's, yeah, that's yeah, really I think it's the best out there. Out there for sure. Yeah. You can add that to other saws. Yeah, the, the 780 takes it, and it look. It, no, it looks. The, the, the 780 only certain versions of the 780. Yeah, it's only it. certain versions. There's an version. A and a B version. No, the 780 it's built in. Oh, the 780 yeah. is built in, other, but other what's stars? the other one? Six, six. Yeah, like 7... 712, something weird yeah. like that. Yeah, yeah. for those, You're right. yeah, you have to look at the, the manufacturing uh, series number. Yeah, like the A, B... Right, I tried to get one, but I... No, I went and got it and bought it, and I got the wrong one, and I bought the laser or the light and everything. I was mad. Well, some of the 10 saws, like even the simple compound, like their 220 model, it's maybe 708. Yeah. Some, something like that, and it fits right there. Another thing I thought was really cool was, was those angle grinders that they had with the guards. Yeah, those yeah. are cool. I don't you think know. we got any pictures of those. I don't typically like guards on an angle grinder like that for a cutoff grinder, but it, that it was really easy, simple to use. It was low profile. And yeah, that's, yeah, you're right. It's got a bail on it. That was for a cutoff? Yeah, so they got a special angle grinder made just for a cutoff. It's got a different handle on it. Where were you? 
No, I saw that, but um, what's sure the blade? But can you also put like a Type 27 on? Like, uh, <laughs> sure. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, can, can you put like a regular wheel? Well, it was a, it was just a regular yeah. cutoff yeah. wheel. Oh. You know. But well, you can't switch to a grinder if you want to. Maybe with a different, different. You guard. could. You, you just have to. Yeah, take you can up. switch to a grinder. You switch to a grinder. You could just have to take. You off have to take the, the shroud. Yeah. Yeah, it was a cool shroud. I mean, they were using the two different cutoff wheels. The new one was ceramic, yeah. and I mean, it lasted a little bit longer, but they were comparing it against 3M. I don't know, man. They, cut, they, cut, well, they showed us they did five cuts through that rebar. 3M? They have very good abrasives normally. Yeah, really? Really? Things See, I would good, use like man. a Diablo or something. Or something like that. 3M is... What's it? Like, like they make like sandpapers and stuff. They, they I think it, it, yeah, it did look thicker, but still, I mean, it cut through that You won't really find it at like Home Depot, but when you order from industrial supplies... That's where you yeah. Get it? Like you, you finish know, a car, they say what the price you, you get like three M. No. Wow. There's a couple other brands, but it's, it's really good, really popular. Nice. All right, let's wrap this up. And we had the Matt Kansas car there too, so oh, yeah. that was cool. That was yes, cool. they started it in there. It was pretty cool. You guys missed it. If you didn't check it out on Periscope, some people checked it out. They got to see it live. It was pretty cool. But that's about it, you guys. We're going to go and uh, eat. eat. And finish it up. Wait to fly home. Wait to fly home. Yeah, three hours of eating. Yeah. All right. What's your website? Workshopaddict.com. What's it about? Woodworkers, metal workers, do do it yourselfers. Okay. What's your website? Tool guy. What's it about? Magazines. Magazines. Tools. Like porno magazines. Or? Uh, let's say toy collectibles. Oh, okay, nice. What's your website? I don't remember. What is it again? Tools and Action. Oh, Tools and Action.com. What, what is it about? Yeah. Chevychase.com. Ch Chevychase.com. <laughs> and what's it about? It's about tools, you guys. Tools. It's the best tool site on the planet. Tools and Action. Check it out. <laughs> For more exciting tool action, go to toolsinaction.com.